Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter for boxing related tweets, or you can subscribe to the channel, click that notifications button, and get a new notification whenever a new video is uploaded. Let's talk about Demetrius Andre against Liam Williams. Two terrific fighters, really talented fighters. You know, Liam Williams really goes under the radar because he's not, um, in my opinion, he's underachieved a little bit. Liam Williams. He's a very talented fighter that should have beaten Liam Smith. In my opinion, he's the more talented fighter than Liam Smith. And the first fight was certainly going his way. And uh, he ended up retiring in the ninth round. And we'll talk about that in a second because he built up a big lead and there was a clash of heads that caught him just above the eye <coughs> and, uh, or rather the side of the eye. And the, he was asked if he can continue. And I think he played on it, to be honest with you, that he was having double vision and blurred vision that he couldn't see, which a lot of people gave him criticism for. Because I think he felt that it, with a clash of heads it was going to the scorecards and he would have won the fight. However, uh, he has some stamina issues, I believe. And as he began to tire, and I believe this because he's only ever gone 12 rounds once, and that was in the rematch. Uh, he'd gone 11 rounds against um, uh, against Gary Cochran, though. But still, he, he, in my opinion, he started to fade in the Smith fight, the first fight. And he, in the second fight, the same thing happened. We'll get to that in a sec. But... The point is he looked for an easy way out for the WBO interim uh, light middleweight title that was on the line and it ended up biting him in the backside, right? Personally, I think he should have carried on. He would have done enough to win the fight. Even if he'd lost, you know, the last three rounds after that, I think he built up such a lead that, that he would have been okay. Um, but he obviously may be concerned about the scorecards. He tried to take that easier way out. That's how I interpreted it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was genuine damage to the guy's eye. It affected his vision in whatever way. And he was very, very unlucky. In the rematch, it was very, very even up until the midway point. Um, then um, Smith started to outwork him a little bit. And late on, you saw that uh, Williams came on strong, but he tired again. And in those championship rounds... You know, 11 and 12, um, I think he won 10 if I remember off the top of my head, but 11 and 12, he faded. And I think that's what ended up costing him the fight, to be honest with you. One judge had it as a draw, which some people were saying was a terrible decision. I could see why. It was a very competitive fight. I felt the other two judges, particularly one of them, had it far too wide. But I thought the right man got the job done. Now, in between those two fights, one of the things you saw is an adjustment from Smith. And he started to bring more upper body movement into it. And this could be key when analyzing this fight. So let's talk about Liam Williams' strengths and weaknesses. So first and foremost, he's a boxer puncher. He gets on that back foot and he moves around the ring. And if you're chasing him down, he, um, he he's more than happy to box your face off and continue to move. He can move. If he wants to stand and have a tear up though, he wants you to be a more immobile target because he's very, very good at disguising some powerful shots because there's not much load on his straight shots. He'll have a high guard and from there, he'll step in with a jab that's quite straight or step in with a right hand and there's no load up. He's not pulling back. It's straight and it's very, very effective. Um, and when he does get up close after that, he starts to wing these hooks to the body, vicious shots and he's very, very fluid, very ferocious, very, um, very fluid fighter. I love to watch him. I've been a fan for many, many years. That Smith fight though, to me, will always have question marks, at least until he can put them to bed going forward, because he's, um, they're fights he should have won, in my opinion. I think he's the more talented fighter. So because he didn't get the job done, it does make me question, is there something that will hold him back in terms of mentally speaking? You know, is there something that, he's very aggressive, we know that, even after fights, when he stops guys, he's still shouting at them, he's very aggressive. But is he a bully? And when things don't go his way, he struggles to adapt? I don't know. I don't know the guy personally. But their fights, I feel he should have he should have gotten a better of. And he is a top talent. However, like I said, when there was that upper body movement in the second fight, he struggled a little bit. There was a bit more movement from Smith. And Smith doesn't move anywhere near as well as Demetrius Andre. Now, one interview that Liam Williams gave a couple of years ago was that the hardest he's ever had it in a ring fighting or sparring and he's been in there with some fantastic guys um in sparring as well is when he had to spar billy joe saunders now what does billy joe saunders do billy joe saunders changes the height dynamic and distance dynamic to make himself hard to hit that fluidity 
So I'm wondering, with someone as slippery as Andre, if that's going to be a problem again for Liam Williams, is he going to be able to get inside and start, start going to, to you know, because he varies his attacks very well. He's got a lot of variation on his shots. And when a guy does duck, he will vary and throw shots downwards and cause guys a lot of problems. But if it's a constant change in height dynamic, dip in and dive in, and Andre th throws these wide hooks where he almost falls out of position and he's sometimes not in a position to counter, which is a weakness, but it's so unorthodox that it can throw off an opponent. And I think that might be the difference maker here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised though if, Willi if Williams does this. I think he's a very, very talented fighter. I really do. I think he's massively underachieved. But that issue with the upper body movement is where I think he'll have a problem. I think he'll prefer guys, Williams, who are a little bit more upright. Guys who aren't quite as slippery as and unorthodox. And we know that Andre throws punches from unusual angles. And if it ends up becoming a war of attrition, you then have to start asking yourself, what is Williams' mentality going to be like? You know, Andre has been, you know, he's a very vocal character. Uh, he's quite, I think he's quite likable, to be honest with you. But um, he does rub a lot of people up the wrong way. He's spoken negatively about Canelo and stuff like that. And he's been calling out a lot of the top guys. And the fights never seem to happen. Now, why don't they happen? Are they avoiding him? Is he avoiding them? I don't know. Give me your take on that. Whatever the case might be, he's a guy that's got a terrific record undefeated. Obviously, I think he's 31 and 0 now. Um, but he still hasn't had his defining fights. And he's at getting to an age now, 33 years old, where he's really got to get a move on. I mean, the amateurs at, uh, at Waterway, he was a, a world champion gold medalist. At, at the Pan American Games, he was a silver medalist. But, you know, you're talking about uh, in Chicago in 2007, he won a gold medal at the World Championships, the World Amateur Championships. And he's never really kicked on at the pro game like he was expected to. And now that he's up at super middleweight, you have to ask yourself... Um, uh, you know what? What? What does the future hold for him at thirty-three years old? Does he have the time now to really target the top middleweights and super middleweights? I, I think he's gone way past light middleweight now. Um, let me know what you think. He doesn't always maintain range as effectively as he could, in my opinion, in terms of his his punches from range. You know, from in terms of straight shots, he can put them together, but he's not always the guy who's so rangy who maximizes that. He is happy for you to come inside and for him to throw these wide hooks from, from different angles. He can be hit though, because he does get himself out of position. So this is a really, really interesting fight. Let me know how you think this fight goes. Like I said, I fancy Andre just, but I wouldn't be surprised if Williams pulled off the upset here. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. God bless.